Hi, welcome to day three of the four day prosperity boost, where today I will share prosperity principles five and six. And I am super excited about these. I'm trying to narrow down <laughs> these topics and I have a lot of words. So we'll see how this goes. I'm so excited about these. These are huge principles to be aware of. Um, and then, so we're going to focus on these today and then tomorrow we're going to do some more workshop -y stuff around these and the next two principles, the last two principles tomorrow. Okay. So welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. And, uh, just so you know, you're in the revolution of how you see money in business, like a revolution of how our creative entrepreneurs are stepping into their power around money and business and thriving and um, they are showing up and you are showing up and shining and lifting each other up, especially in this Facebook group. Thank you so much for participating. Okay, so I'm just gonna dive into principle number five, the principle of reclaiming truth. This is huge. So over the centuries, and so I'm gonna quote from two different books today uh, and I'll let you know which ones. Um, okay, so the Little Money Bible actually has this quote that I think summarizes a lot, a lot of what I, what I want to say. Over the centuries, money has gotten a bad rap. It has been associated with corruption and the misuse of power. The perception grew that somehow the rich depraved the poor, and then, and then if you became wealthy, you disconnected yourself from love and goodness. So this concept is also like, if I have something, somebody else can't have it. It's taking away from. I'm not saying there's not politics and power involved in money and who gets what, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, yeah, because that's a whole other conversation, which is related to this. All right. So actually, I'll go ahead and say it now. <laughs> so um, yeah, so in a, in a culture that has or in a world that's been kind of taken over power wise by colonialism, and a world that's very patriarchal, uh, and the richest 1% of people have as much wealth as the rest of the whole entire world. We're talking like, I think it's like 8 billion people now combined. Like that, that's inconceivable, you know? Um, and the richest 62 people in the world have as much wealth as the poorest half of the global population. <laughs> it's insane. So there's definitely power stuff going on. Um, but this is a thing. We don't have to be victim to it. We get to still claim our relationship with money and with business and step into it and not be sucked down into it. Okay, so one of my favorite teachers ever um, was an author and teacher named Paulo Freire. I'm not even sure how to say his last name, honestly. Um, but he wrote The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And this is a book that I adored in grad school. Like I, I did tons of, re I taught um, English as a second language or English as an, another language and studied that in grad school. And I just devoured his work because it was so empowering. Um, and his concept is basically that in most education systems, they teach the oppressors to be proud of who they are and they teach the oppressed that they, ha they don't, don't have value. So unless you're a white male, you're not included in the history books, not in good ways anyway, usually, or barely, unless you married somebody as a woman, unless you're a bad guy like Pancho Villa or something. Um, and then you were given no credit and not, there's not many models of success for you to follow or there weren't. So um, I'm no expert on all this stuff and how to talk about it, but I, I do recognize um, colonialism and I'm learning how to decolonize business. I also studied um, uh, the donut economics model, which is a brilliant model um, that's being in, in, installed or <laughs> being practiced in certain cities, especially in Europe. Um, so there, there's like the old school economics and what's been happening. And the thing about economics is that economics is you can't have, so if you, if you look at the definition of economics, you'll find that scarcity is one of the defining principles. There has to be scarcity in order for you to have the economic system that we are in. 
So, but scarce, the thing is about scarcity is that the earth has enough for us. It's just about distribution. So there is enough. Um, so anyway, th th this could be like a whole, <laughs> a whole course, a whole semester course, honestly. But I just want to name some of these things just to bring them to this conversation. Um, okay. So, so truth. So here's elements of truth and what's happening. And um, I'm going to bring up some things that affect our limiting beliefs and our mindset mostly. So this is another quote from, um, I think I'm gonna pull up this video here so I can, okay, great. Um, okay, so there's another quote from the Little Money Bible. It's hard to align to money if you, and I'll add if any part of you, thinks that it's evil or nasty. But once you, be, once you come to an understanding that money itself is neutral, that abundance is natural and spiritual, it's easy to see that having money does not necessarily deprive somebody else. Money is a symbol of appreciation, a gesture of goodwill and compassion. It can be. It's only the negative emotions around money that are evil, <laughs> greed, avarice, and obsession with power, and so on. So, Money is basically a tool. So this phone is a tool that I can use to do a plethora of things. It's endless what I can do. I can, I can bully somebody. I can have a business. I can, you know, change the world with, you know, conversation or change my world or somebody else's world with conversation. And another tool that I like to use is a hammer. So think about a hammer and what it can do it can hurt, it can build, it can, it can create, it can destroy. So these two things are examples of tools that are neutral in themselves. It's about how they are used and money falls into this category. There's a lot of other categories it falls into too, which I'm gonna go over that today and tomorrow. So, so seeing money is not evil. It's about what is done with it. Okay, so then another way to look at money is that it's energy. So this is a quote by Dan Millman. I love this quote. Money is neither my God nor my devil. It is a form of energy that tends to make us more of who we are, whether it's greedy or loving. Mic drop. Like some people, there's a limiting belief that comes up sometimes with people that they're going to become evil or greedy if they have money. But the thing is, like, if your essence is not, you know, greedy, then that's not, you're not going to become more of that. You're going to become more generous. And I think about, like, there's been research done about uh, who tips better, who gives to poor people, or people begging. Um, I don't know the exact details. I just know that the result was that people who've had, who've had gone without, who are poor, typically are more generous. Um, uh, so you can just become more of who you are and you get to choose your values and how you spend money when you do have it, when you do have extra. Okay, another quote here is by Joseph Campbell. Money is congealed energy and releasing it releases life's possibilities. Brilliant. Okay. So my main point with this is like seeing that there's, there's like no one truth, right? But there's a lot of untruths that we've been programmed. Um, and one of the funniest things is that, um, actually I wrote this down, but I can't find it. So um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like you with, with these beliefs, it's kind of like you're, you, there's a monster that you're scared of but then you created it in your mind. Granted, it was sculpted by the environment and culture, um, but you get to uncreate it and create something different. Yeah, oh, here's it, here it is. It's like you drew a picture of a monster that freaks you out, but you forgot that you were the one who drew it. Um, so that's like a judgment of money, not actually money. So money is not, all this, so this whole conversation is not, this is, money is not doing anything. 
you know, money is not the corruption. Money is not the economy. Money is just a thing. It's just energy. And it's just energy. So everything you experience about money is more about you than it is about money. Money isn't causing or creating fear. It's just bringing it to the surface. So it's a catalyst to clear out what's not you and become more of who you are. It's a transformational tool. Okay, so yeah. All right, so um, the, next, the next thing we're gonna go into here is value. Um, and they, these two are so connected because a lot of these untruths are the things that form how we value ourselves and how we value our creativity. And in schools, creativity is not as valued as other things such as math, science, uh, even reading comprehension, you know, those kinds of things. All the things that were tested, that were prioritized financially and curriculum wise, and the things that were cut, music, drama, art, um, those kinds of things are were not as appreciated, not as valued. So if, you know, and it's easy in our culture. And, and then there's the whole starving artist thing, you know, the whole idea that, uh, you know, artists starve basically. <laughs> that you can't make money as an artist, which is obviously false because look at all the artists that are thriving. Um, if you look for it, you will find it, you'll see it. And there are plenty that are doing really, really well. Okay. So um, you can't sell something you don't value yourself on all levels. So if you are not really valuing your creativity and honoring your time, then with it, then it won't, you won't sell it as well as you could if you value, valued it yourself. Um, okay. There's a quote that says, this is M. Scott Peck. Until you value yourself, you won't value your time. Until you value your time, you will not do anything with it. So you value yourself, value your time, do something with it. Yeah. So being willing to step into your value and not just for you, because when you create value into the, and put it into the world, you're giving that to others. You're enriching people's lives, literally, with your work in whatever form it comes. Many forms, probably. Okay. Okay, so. There's another quote here by Kyle Cease that says, and he wrote, um, he wrote The Illusion of Money. And the other book that I was quoting earlier is The Little Money Bible by Stuart Wilde. Um, okay, this is an ass kicker, so get ready. If you want to be a writer, painter, an entrepreneur, or anything else, but spend all your time working at a job you don't like because it pays the bills, that's using money as an excuse to disqualify all your unlimited talents and creativity. It's using money as an excuse to disqualify all your unlimited talents and creativity. So you're basically saying that your money, that money is more important than your soul's calling. So I'm not the kind of coach who tells people to leap off the cliff and quit everything immediately and create a business because I know taking a, making a business work takes time. And I like, I help people create strategies to evolve their life and move it in the direction they want to go in. Um, yeah. So, but this, this is like a huge statement because a lot of times what I find too is that artists, uh, and, and speaking for myself too, we ignore money or, and then, and then we are screwed. <laughs> we screw ourselves over because we're like, we get into scarcity because we get into scarcity because we're not dealing with it. 
So we're not facing it to be able to deal with it, to have a conscious relationship with it. And then, um, and then it like, it's a sabotage form that backfires. And so then we have to deal with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That is huge. Yeah. So great. All right. So stepping into value. All right. Um, so the, the sixth principle is the principle of value. And this is value, like owning your value and giving value and just talking about value. And in my money program, my money intensive, intensive program, I talk more about your values and how to, um, how to live from those and how to spend from those and how to manage your money from those and how to create your life from those values. Um, and that's, I can't do all that here, but I just want to say that's part of the conversation as well. Um, okay, so another quote from uh, The Illusion of Money. Let go of the part of you that is trying to get results and doesn't feel worthy. You don't need the results. You are the result. So it's like you're trying to prove something. I've totally done this before. I had a coach call me out on this years ago that kind of woke me up. Um, this might sound backwards, um, but the truth is we're the source of any result that comes into our lives. So you are the result, you are the source of any result that comes into your life. So let's stop falling in love with the results and start falling in love with ourselves. This is Kyle Cease saying this. It's so brilliant. So not attaching to, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, not attaching to the results, but really becoming the results. Focusing on what we can do, not what we can't control. So what we're talking about here is looking at a lifelong, uh, lifelong habits around seeing money, ignoring money, obsessing over it, attaching our worth to outcomes. So it's all about reclaiming your value. And your value includes your being beingness, who you are in your being, your energy, your time, your skills, your expertise, your experience, your senses, your intuition, your uniqueness, your connection with higher, your higher self and universe, whatever you want to call it. Um, the value you bring to everything and everyone by being you. That's part of the value that you bring. Yes. Because there's only one of you. And like, we are these, you know, meat suits with skin and mostly made of water, like, you know, rotating on this ball of dirt in the middle of a galaxy among, I don't know how many galaxies and how many universes, you know, in some ways we're so insignificant. At the same time, we are so freaking amazingly unique. So like that is valuable. It's priceless. Okay. So, okay, let's talk about value for a second. There was a great meme that I saw recently that said, um, you should have organic raspberry confidence. The, you know, who else can have, or what other thing can have the audacity to charge $7 for a six ounce container? <laughs> and raspberries go bad really quickly too. So it's not like they're durable, but they are yummy. Um, so I love that. Like that, that's a placement of value on something that people pay for. Um, and then so as far as like work exchange, uh, there was, there was also a meme that I saw, I love memes, um, that said, okay, the bill to, for this contractor was a thousand dollars. It was $1 to cut the wire. It was $999 for knowing which wire to cut. So this speaks to the value that we bring with our expertise and our experience and our confidence, honestly, and our intuition even. Like the, the difference between like painting something versus a lifetime of experience and learning how to do that. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so um, a lot of times uh, creatives have trouble actually measuring uh, goals with money. Um, so one way to create goals in, in your business is to use money as a, a goal setting. So how much money do you want to make? How much money do you need to make? Um, that's a whole nother thing I cover in my money program. Um, but the bottom line I want to say here is that you can also measure success by the value you create. So for example, um, if you want to measure it by how many people see your work and you can measure that somehow, like an exposure at a show or online, um, cause like the, you still have impact there. Uh, how many clients you have, how many people engage with you during certain activities. Um, so you can create value without having to um, measure it in money as well. There's a great quote by Amanda Gorman that says, I think if I could go back in time and give myself a message, it would be to reiterate that my value as an artist doesn't come from how much I create. I think that mindset is yoked to capitalism. Being an artist is about how and why you touch people's lives, even if it's one person, even if that's yourself <laughs> in the process of making art. Like you, you created something in the world that wasn't here before. So that's a shift. That's a contribution to, to the world. Um, yeah, so not attaching it to the results. And I know this is counterintuitive because I'm a business coach. <laughs> but this is, this is like the unpacking of this stuff. So you can get to a place where you can create from a more neutral place. Um, and tomorrow we're going to talk about two amazing aspects of this. If I had to just pick two of the eight, I'd probably choose the ones tomorrow um, to talk about because they are so imperative to um, changing your relationship with money and stepping into prosperity. Okay, a couple more quotes here. Low self-esteem is like driving through life with your handbrake on. That's by Maxwell Maltz. Mm. Yeah. So really owning your value as much as you can and feeding that value. You're reminding yourself of the impact you've made, putting post-its in places where you can remind yourself or testimonials. Um, yeah, it's huge. Okay. So one of the things about money is that it's tied to the concept of security. So there's no actual thing as such as security because we're all going to die, <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> so, um, so security is really an in internal process or internal relationship with how we perceive things. Um, and this great quote by the Money Bible says, the only way you can increase security is to nurture yourself. And the one way I see this is that if you have, if, if you know, if to, the, to your primal brain, this lizard brain we talked about a couple of days ago, if you're saying to that part of yourself that I'm safe enough to take a bath, I'm safe enough to do tasks that are um, important, I'm, I'm safe enough to take my time doing something, you're saying there's enough. And when your body feels that, your nervous system can feel that, you create more capacity to receive and you're in a whole different playing field. You're not in scarcity anymore. You're in the prosperity flow. So today's action steps are one, nurture yourself. I think I did this on the first day too. I can't tell you how important this is, especially right now in the world. So nurture yourself. And, you know, do it, create space for it and give yourself some time. Spaciousness is prosperity. Giving yourself that and nourishing your nervous system, you know, you can only, you can only handle as much as your nervous system can tolerate. So when you give yourself um, space and you're nurturing yourself, whatever form that looks like, it doesn't have to be going to a spa day, although that's nice. It can be a bath, it can be a walk, it can be connecting with a loved one. It can be any, what nurtures you and asking yourself, because that's really where your values stand, you know. It could be painting something for yourself for, without thinking about anybody else 
or doing an art form that you love that you don't want to show anybody else that you're just doing for yourself. It could be a, so many different things, you know? So nourishing yourself as a radical act of self-care and prosperity. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is to reflect on beliefs that are not true. So thinking about um, the beliefs we talked about earlier on, you know, from our culture, that money is evil, that people who have money are evil, um, that, you know, if I have something, other people can't have it. Like this, this list goes on and on and on. Like I have a huge list of limiting beliefs with money. Um, and tomorrow we're going to go through some of these and I'm going to show you a way to flip your beliefs and to replace them with something. It's a priceless uh, process that you can do over and over and over again. Um, so think about like some of your core limiting beliefs. It can be as a creative, it can be as a woman, it can be as an entrepreneur, it can be, um, you know, anything that you notice that's holding you back, sort of a monster that's there um, that you get to pull your power back from and step into a new relationship with it. Okay. So tomorrow, again, I have two amazing prosperity principles for you that will change your life. And I have a special offer at the end tomorrow and I want to do some live coaching um, as well with these beliefs and stuff. So I'm going to do a zoom and I'm going to try to project the, you know, put the zoom up on, on Facebook, a lot Facebook group. But if I can't do that, I'll just send you the zoom link. Cause I want you all there live in person when you can be, because I want to be able to do some coaching with you and give you some coaching. Um, so, and, and hear more, um, more real time, what's going on for you. Okay. So thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for taking these steps to step into your power around money and claiming prosperity and showing up for your business and your life and for each other in the Facebook group. And I will see you tomorrow.